Pause this right. Oh, we're live. Hey, everybody. Happy New Year. Yes, I always seem so surprised when we're live. It's just fun. It's fun to know everybody's there. Surprise. <laughs> Hello. Happy Hello. New Year. <laughs> Welcome today to Unlocking Your Book. Uh, what is this? Thursday, January 2nd. It's 2020. <laughs> it's a new decade. Crazy. A brand new decade. And here we are. And we get to officially say this month we get to launch this course. And um, what is it, 12 days away now? 12 days. 12 days until the course is is live and ready for you to start partaking of yeah. <laughs> January 14th. So you're watching this now. Make sure you comment below. Where are you joining from? We love to see where everybody is joining us from. Um, share with us. Where are you at? Make sure you share this with your friends. Share this on your page um, we want to bring in every person that is like b busting at the seams because they have a message inside them. They, uh, they need help unlocking, like, how do you write your book? You, you want to know, and we are here to help you. So, um, share this with those people in your life and, um, go to unlockingyourbook.com for more information. Um, we want to help you remove the confusion, clarify your message, and build your audience. Um, we're really excited about today. I mean, we'll, Jeremiah and I are here this morning talking a little bit more about the stages of writing and some of the mechanics of writing. And then this afternoon, we'll be back at 1.30 p.m. Central Time with um, Robia Scott, actress from the Unplanned movie. She played the clinic director. Phenomenal, amazing woman of God, prophetic call in her life. Um, she has written uh, a book called Counterfeit Comforts, Freedom from the Imposters that Keep You from True Peace, Purpose, and Passion. And she does mentoring and she travels and she speaks. So we're really excited that she will not only be with us today at 1.30, but also she is one of your mentors. She will be with you in the course helping you unlock your book. And we get to visit with her today. So we're excited about that, aren't we? <laughs> very, very excited to have Robia with us. Uh, she's got some great content, some great material, great message. She has some coaching and some mentoring um, uh, offers of her own. So we're really interested in having her come in, interview her, and then help her, you know, really t uh, actually <laughs> help us as we're moving into unlocking your book because she has a lot to give and a lot to unpack. So it's going to be cool. It's very, yeah. very exciting. I can hardly believe that we're just 12 days, 12 days, <laughs> 12 days away. So it's amazing. Yeah. It's like, I hear the song, the 12th day of Christmas, <laughs> but we're past that now. And now it's like the 12 days of unlocking your book. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm like, Hey, there you go. 12 days. The other go. We could come up with a song, you know, we should do first, that on the first day of unlocking your book. You, I, I'm actually not ready for that. Mentally, <laughs> I'm not ready for that because I'm not ready for Christmas and it's gone. So, <laughs> but yeah. anyway, it's really, um, it, it's a real privilege for us to be here with you for all of our members. And then even those that are, you're not a member uh, yet, or maybe you never will be, but you're definitely being blessed and God's ministering to you. It's a real honor for us. It's a real privilege to be able to be here in the mornings with you and be able to uh, unpack some of the things that God has done in our heart and God has done some in our life and is doing. And we want this to be, very, very authentic. Everything that we're doing, everything that we're promoting, all of our mentors, all of the classes, the lessons, everything. Um, and in that, we really feel and sense that there's a call on unlocking your book on all of the mentors, on myself and Chrissy and our families. You know, Chrissy has a family. I have a family. I have a family of like 268. Um, I include, you know, my dogs and my cat, but you know, we, we have lives and all of this, but there's a real call that's going out and we uh, feel honored and privileged. And before we really go into our, our recap today, and in the recap, we're actually going to talk a little bit about what uh, Dr. Brian Simmons um you know, he talked about the four stages and he, he really 
honed in on one of them. He honed in on the first stage, which is um, the, uh, what is that first stage? On the first, oh, uh, to conceive and the vision. The vision and really the conceiving, the initial idea of what it is that God wants you to write. He touched a little bit on inspiration. He teased with revelation, the third stage, and then the fourth stage, he he teased, teased, teased. <laughs> Where he's right. like, we'll, we'll save that for later. And I want to say to all of our uh, members that are watching, um, you're going to get a not only the video copy of all of Dr. Brian Simmons's teachings on those stages, stage one, the vision, stage two, the inspiration, stage three, revelation, and stage four, the mystery stage. You're not only going to get all the video teachings and the video lessons, we're also going to be giving you the actual download of it in a PDF format. So we'll be uh, transcribing all of those and providing those to you as members. And in fact, you're going to, as members, oh my goodness, you're going to get uh, Chrissy's videos and then all of her transcriptions. You're going to get Patricia King's videos or, or video and that transcription. You're going to get you're going to get Lana. You're going to get Robia Scott. You're going to get all of these beautiful, wonderful people that are so full of the Lord. You're going to get all of their videos and going to get all of their transcriptions. But um, before we, you know, kind of recap a little bit about the conceiving stage vision, we're going to talk. We are going to talk today about inspiration, the difference between inspiration and motivation. I just want to reiterate uh, the call to new writers, this new breed of writers. You may be watching and listening and already published a couple of books, self-published. Maybe you published with a, a publisher, but you feel like there's something that you could get. Maybe it's the marketing piece. Maybe it's the mentoring piece. Maybe it's the mechanics piece that would help take you to the next level in, in your writing. But there is certainly a call that's going out in the earth for believers to rise up, to hear that call from the Lord. It's not, it's not my call. It's not Chrissy's call. We're not calling. It's not our calling you to us. It's father calling you to sit with him and to pen new strategies, new revelation, new understanding, things that you have walked out that only you can deliver through your unique voice. Somebody may have similar uh, problems that they solve. They may have similar stories, uh, similar bends, you know, or anointings, but only you have the unique voice that can touch those specific people. And so there is that call that's going out and we're in agreement with that call on your life to pen this. And that's what unlocking your book uh, dot com is all about the mentoring, the mechanics, uh, the uh, the marketing. And then we do have a uh, very soon we're going like just in a couple of days. Actually, it would be on Monday, uh, Monday, this coming up Monday. We're going to be releasing a fourth module, which is a bonus module for anybody that signs up before January 14th. If you've already signed up, it's yours. Uh, but a brand new uh, bonus module that's going to be at the tail end of the marketing. So if you're hearing that call where God is, is, is telling you, asking you, uh, requiring you, um, not requesting, <laughs> but requiring you to step out into this place where you begin to maybe do some scary stuff, you know, do some things that you haven't done before. We want to help you unlock that book. We want to help you become a writer. If you have a dream, to become a writer, this is the time to do that. If you have a dream to get the word out and to promote your message, this is the time to do that. And we want to help you. We want to stand shoulder to shoulder and help, like the book of Nehemiah says, close the gaps, <laughs> close the gaps and stand shoulder to shoulder with you. And I can't think of a better way to do it than through mentoring. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah mentoring helps draw that out and it For provides sure. that um, it's almost like that championing and that cheerleading saying, come on over, you can do it. You know, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. So, Hey, everybody, let us know 
where you're watching from. Please share this broadcast. Uh, we're super, super blessed to be with you. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Chuck. Uh, hello, Lynn and Peggy. So many awesome people. We love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, Andrea, thank you. Amber from Florida. We got some more Florida people in the house. What a blessing to have you here with us. And just uh, to encourage you once again today at 1.30 Central Time, Robia Scott from the Unplanned Movie will be with us. So we will be back at 1.30 p.m. Central. Robia Scott will be with us to uh, fr from the Unplanned Movie. And she's going to talk a little bit about her book. She's going to talk a little bit about uh, how she'll be helping us unpack and unlock our books. And so very, very exciting to have her. Make sure you share with some of your friends that Robia Scott will be joining us. And lastly, my goodness, what an amazing team. Oh, hello. Uh, what an amazing team of people that we have. We have 30 mentors right now. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. It's really amazing. Um, the, here's the, the new word is, uh, is plethora. Like that's our new word, you know. I wish we could trademark it and get a nickel every time <laughs> we use that word. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, the cool thing about the mentoring is when they do those video lessons, uh, we transcribe that video lesson. So for example, so you have uh, Brian Simmons, you know, he's he's gonna teach multiple lessons. Chrissy's gonna be teaching multiple lessons. Robia Scott will be teaching a lesson. Patricia King will be teaching a lesson. Lana Vosser will be teaching a lesson. So you have all of these different mentors, 30, 30 mentors will be teaching lessons and then a few people teaching multiple lessons. Every single one of those is a video. So you can watch it live or you can watch it in an archive where you just log into the website and watch it anytime from any device from anywhere that you have internet connection. And we're transcribing those and turning that into, uh, we're turning it essentially into a book for you as one of the mentors. So we'll take all of those lessons compile them for you and then we'll be giving you those lessons as well it's um it's a lot mm -hmm. i don't how do you say a lot in spanish french german mucho, and <laughs> mucho, mucho. grande <laughs> oh because now i'm like oh wow jeremiah did you really miss that it's mucho grande okay we're gonna give you mucho it's that simple <laughs> um Oh, you just swap multiple languages, so I grab the Spanish language. It's, it's is all anybody I know. watching that knows. Does anybody know what it is in Swahili? Okay, probably, probably not. Okay, well, maybe. Who knows? Well, anyway, what do you have to say? Let's recap a little bit and let's talk. We're gonna we're gonna be on here for a little while. We're gonna talk about continually, continually talk about the stages of writing, and this is the this kind of like it, it it fuses over from the mentoring and the marketing, but this is the mechanics. Uh, Chrissy will be teaching the core of this, and then you've got Brian that'll be you know working a little bit in there as well. But the stages of writing, the mechanics of writing, the real practical, the real nuts and bolts. Um, and when Brian was on uh, with us just uh, here, right? Actually. Brian was on with us last year. Um, we were talking about uh, stage one and stage one being the conceive stage where you're actually becoming aware of what that idea is. And Dr. Brian Simmons calls it the vision stage where there's a there's an idea there and you're creating a vision. You're writing it and you're making it plain. You have an actual vision to write and you uh, really are going through that conception stage that, yes, I'm going to write. And you start to take those steps forwards. So that's the vision to write the book. And then he went in just a, a little bit, very, very little. And he's going to be uh, continually going on for the rest of those stages. But then he talked a little bit about uh, the inspiration stage. This is where stuff starts to get created, starts to develop. It kind of goes from just dreaming about the book where, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between inspiration and motivation, where you get inspired. You don't just have the vision, but now there's the inspiration. And these are 
um, concrete, genuine ideas. And the word inspiration is not, it's not something external. The word inspiration means like breathed on. So God breathes on and provides inspiration. He gives the, uh, he gives the um, empowerment through inspiration. It's very, very different than motivation. So if you're just motivated to do something, it's kind of, well, it, it relies on you. Yeah. If you're motivated, you got to have willpower. Here we are, it's 2020. I thought we'd be living on Mars by now when I was a kid, you know, 2020. I'm like, we're going to be living in space. But, um, you know, we're, you know, people making New Year's resolution, and that's great. That's awesome. You know, kudos and, and blessings to you. But it's more than the motivation to, say, lose weight, more than the motivation to write a book more than the motivation to serve people more, love people more, uh, those types of things. It's not just sure mustering up, you know, guts and glory, grind it out. I'm going to do this. That's motivation. But in, and we'll go into depth in a little bit. Inspiration is on the inside where the Holy Spirit and Father has infused He's infused on the inside of you. He's breathed that life on the inside of you so that you can take that vision and move it into revelation. And that's what we want to talk a little bit that one of those stages about inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. You want me to talk about that right now? Are you pausing? Yes, yes. I mean, talk, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the difference between motivation and inspiration mm -hmm. and for you. Uh, created for the impossible, yeah. uh, weighing the giant of fear. I mean, surely. I mean, yeah. those are those are not just like, oh, this is a cute little book. You know, the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you. Created for the impossible, slaying the giant of fear. Th those yeah. are the major. You can't yeah. write those, can't live those. Uh, you can't walk in the impartation of those uh, motivations. Something more powerful than you. That's the difference between yeah. motivation. Motivation means yep. I have the power to do it. Inspiration means it's bigger than me. Yeah, Never going to be as big as Jesus. That's right. Yeah. I mean, even the, I like looking up definitions of things and even Webster's dictionary um, acknowledges the definition. Number one, a, definition for inspiration is a divine influence or action on a person believed to qualify him or her to receive and communicate sacred revelation. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it, it, it's just incredible to me that even the, the, the secular dictionary still acknowledges the true definition of inspiration and that that's there. Um, it also means the action or power of moving the intellect or emotions, the act of influencing or suggesting opinions. It, number two is it's the, act, it's the act of drawing in um, the quality or state of being, an inspiring agent or influence. And so we know from the Bible that, it, that we have divine, that we do truly have divine inspiration as believers, that that inspiration is deposited inside of us. It is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of wisdom that reveals to us everything that's on the Father's heart. Jesus said that when the Spirit comes, he will tell you everything, reveal to you everything that's on the Father's heart. And so that's why we're messengers. We are messengers because we have the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit inside of us, revealing to us, not all at once, yeah. But as we journey and as we go, what is on God's heart? And so when you think of writing a book, I mean, it just it just clicks. It's incredible. Of course, I would write down the inspiration that's within. Of course, I would write down what's being written within my heart, you know, and on my heart, on the tablets of my heart. Of course, I would want to write that down. And, then, and the beautiful thing about writing um, your book, writing anything, is that as you write, the more you get, you know, as you write what you got, you're stewarding what you've been given. You're mm -hmm. investing that you're not burying it. Like the guy with the one talent that buried it, you're mm -hmm. investing 
those words. They are being invested. And then there's there's increase that comes as you draw on the inspiration from within, you wow. know? And so I look at inspiration. Yeah, it's it's from the inside out. And then motivation is from the outside in. Motivation and the definition of motivation is the act or process of motivating, a motivating force, stimulus, or influence. Yeah. And so it speaks to this external, I need to be motivated, you know? And we all we all need to be motivated. I have inspiration inside me, but I need motivation to get that out, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, in theory, you know, uh, we all as human beings really like to be motivated um, because yeah. the flip side of that is I'm not motivated. So what do I do? I when I have an assignment, a call in my life to write a book and I have the inspiration on the inside. I know what I want to write. I'm busting at the seams. And then you wake up in the morning. This is your day. You're going to sit down and write and you're not feeling very motivated. You know, in the beginning, there's lots of motivation because it's new. But as you're going, um, that motivation, that new, that new feeling, it's like a a marriage, like the honeymoon stage, you know, it's all very exciting. But then as the days and the weeks and the months go by, we can't rely on that like new excitement. We've got to be remain motivated through by principles, by truth, by, you know, depth, by, um, seemingly small things. And so um, how do we do all that? Like, that's what the course is for. That's what the unlocking your book, the course, the mechanics are for is to really unpack that in greater depth, the how to's, the steps, the walking it out, the when it's hard and things, but just to give like a overview, um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to give an overview, you know, you can, one thing is you can, you can create motivation for yourself, you know, um, and this is not an order, you know, because obviously, you know, drawing on the Lord prayer, all of that is going to be where you're going to want to draw your motivation, but small, tangible, practical nuts and bolts things you can create motivation for yourself, um, in little small things, like give yourself a reward yes. system. You know, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to steward what's inspired in my heart. I'm going to steward the deposits and I'm going to write today, but I'm, I'm tired. I'm sick. My kids are off school. There's no routine. <laughs> um, I'm kind of talking from current experience right now. Um, but I have to, I, I got to do this today. So I'm going to create a reward system. I really like orange scones. So I'm going to buy an orange scone and I'm going to sit it in front of me and I'm going to write, I'm going to set a goal. And when I reach that goal, I'm going to get my reward. I'm going to eat my scone. I I try not to eat carbs. So that's like a real big motivation for me. Um, There's a number of things you can do. It's the simple, fun little things, you know, a cup of tea, you know, a refill on your coffee, you know, got to make it fun. You got to keep it um, upbeat. Like Jeremiah has said, you know, that studies even show when you, you know, to, when things are fun, you can accomplish more difficult tasks. And, and things like that, like buy yourself a new pair of fuzzy socks. I just whatever it is that's fun and almost even childlike, I would venture to say it's almost even the childlike things, because that's that is so much of what helps unlock us too. is that childlike faith that abandon that um, I am God's beloved, you know, and that joy. Um, and it, it, it helps. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I really like the, the, the practical side of this. Um, you know, there's different things that can motivate us. Uh, fear can be a motivator and love can be a motivator. But there's something about when you're m- just motivated from the outside. Some, let's, let's put it into the context of something or someone expresses anger or displeasure that pushes fear onto you, you, of course, have to choose or decide to accept that and then thereby be motivated to do or not to do, to react or to respond specifically to their expression of displeasure or anger that creates fear. In the same way, someone can express 
uh, pleasure or that love or that kindness towards you. And then you're motivated to do something based upon what they're projecting to you. They're projecting fear. You accept it, receive it, and then you're motivated to do or, or not to do. They're projecting love. And so then you're there, then you therefore uh, accept it, receive it, and then you're motivated out of that love. But the motivation, because it's simply external, doesn't, because it's within your own strength, doesn't have the ability to um, stay the course. It will not be enough. Yeah. So think of like you were talking about a child. Um, if we motivate, we, we can certainly motivate our kids to, you know, do some things. You know, like, you know, you better clean your room or else, you know, there's and sometimes that, you know, obviously that's OK. You know, but the the idea here is motivating people or motivating things uh, just in the external will only last so long. And it doesn't really assimilate and become who they are. That's the difference. When it's an external motivation, it only has the ability. It's it's like it's on a timer. It won't have the ability to help them keep going to the next level. And we're not talking about motivating or not motivating people out of fear of love. What we're talking about is we're talking about the difference between being motivated uh, or being inspired to write, how you process your, um, uh, your, your, your writing. I want to read Isaiah chapter 40, this is out of the Passion Translation, verse, uh, starting with verse 29. So this is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 through 31. This God empowers the feeble and infuses the powerless with ever-increasing strength. Even young people faint and get exhausted, and the athletic may stumble and fall. Okay, so let's stop there just for a minute. All right, we're talking about um, young people, right? They've got all the energy you would think in the world. And the scripture is saying even, even young people faint and get exhausted. And then the athletic, I mean, man, they're a professional athlete that you would never imagine them getting exhausted. You would never imagine them stumbling or falling. But, but the Lord is saying through Isaiah here, that even the athletic, they don't have enough motivation externally, enough grind, enough willpower. I'm just going to muscle this up and make this happen. There's not enough of that external human fleshly strength to continually move forward. But in verse 31, it says, but those, okay, hello. That would be me. <laughs> that would be you. Though that would be all of us. But those who will wait for Yahweh's grace will wait for Father's grace will experience divine strength. Boom. That's what I want. That's what we want. That's what we need. That's what we're believing God is doing through unlocking your book and doing in this hour for this new breed of writers is experiencing divine strength. It goes on in verse 31 to say, they will rise up on soaring wings and fly like eagles. They will run their race, or let's put in parentheses, um, just this is the uh, Jeremiah's emphasis here. They will write their book without growing weary, and they will walk through life without giving up. That's inspiration. And you gave the definition of inspiration. It, it means to inspire means to excite or to breathe life into. It comes from a Latin word that means to literally inflame or, or blow into. So when you inspire something, it means you're, uh, it's like a flame that's put on the inside to make it grow. And I just love, I mean, we could, you could take Isaiah 40 verses 29 through 31. And that could, that really could be your stay the course model as you're writing. It is the divine strength of God who infuses you uh, with ever increasing strength. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that the Eagle 
is the only bird that when there's a storm system, they fly into it while all the other birds are flocking and flying away from it. The eagle is actually motivated by the storm. Why? Because that's where the mounting up phrasing, that's where that comes from. They see the storm and they fly into it and they their wing, their wings are out and they catch that that upward, you know, draft and it lifts them up over the storm. And they're able to soar, they're able to mount up above this storm system, you yeah. know? So it's like God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. As a believer, our motivation is so, it, it can almost seem backwards sometime. Like I, there's a storm ahead, I wanna run away, but my spirit, the spirit inside me is like, no, that's where you're gonna soar, you know? The, the hard things, the, the, the difficult things, the, you know? the chaos, the whirlwind doesn't mean that you're going to fly into it. No. When you put your arms out, your wings out in trust with Abba, you're going to write, he's going to mount you up with wing like eagles so that you will soar and you'll soar above the thing that looks impossible. That looks like chaos. That looks like worldly that you can't do. And so, you know, our motivation, plain and simple, as believers is following the voice of our Lord. Yeah. Following the voice of God, even when it doesn't make sense, even when in my flesh, I don't feel very motivated, but I have the spirit of God inside me and his spirit is always <laughs> motivated because mm -hmm. his spirit is always alive and yeah. it's powerful. And the Bible says that the spirit inside me testifies to my spirit that I am a child of God, you know, yeah. you have that inward, you know, you have his spirit, the inspiration within reminding yeah. yourself every day, who, you know, whose you are, yeah. you're a child of God and what God thinks you can do, which is anything and everything. Yeah. And, um, and we have to, we do have to tap into that. So there's little, there's little practical things we can do um, to keep our, our mind engaged and our, Ourself, you know, going when it's when we're tired and weary. Yeah. Ultimately, ultimately, we're motivated by his voice um, and that strength and that infusion of power, you know, his power inside of us to do the impossible, you know, to write the book and release the message. Yes. And it, it's it's so it's so encouraging that we don't have to rely on motivation to do what God has called us to do. We don't have to rely on our feebleness uh, when we're writing. You do not have to simply muster up in your own strength. In fact, that's um, that could really take you down a path um, of, of real error, real challenge when you are relying on just your intellect. You may be a genius. You may be brilliant. You certainly have been wired uh, to function in that capacity, but you don't want to rely in your own strength. And that's not what this is about. This is not about you just mustering up and, you know, bullying you, bullying, sorry, bullying yourself through this. He empowers the feeble and the weak. And then <laughs> I'm thankful that he will infuse you even when you feel powerless, right? That's mm -hmm. what it's in the verse that says, he will infuse the powerless. So if you feel like a powerless writer, a powerless author, you have to break agreement with powerlessness because it's you're doing it from motivation and just your own strength put on the ever increasing strength. Ooh, it yeah. increasing. <laughs> you know, okay, so now I can only lift, uh, right now I can only lift five pounds. So, but I want to lift 10 pounds. Well, how do you go from five pounds to 10 pounds? Keep lifting five over and over, over and over and over and over. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, whoa, I can lift this 10. And now the 10, when you move to the 10, is is um, going to be hard, and you then when you get to the ten, you're like, wow, finally I can lift the ten, but I want to lift the fifteen. Well, how do you get to the fifteen? 
You keep lifting the 10 over and over and over and over. And it's not a formula, but it creates that ever increasing strength. And we get there by waiting for God's grace so that we can experience divine strength. Yes. Yeah. You want to know what motivated, <laughs> what motivated me through writing my books? Why? Yes, we do. Would you like to know? We I mean, like know. I mean, a deadline is very motivating. So there's the deadline, right. but that's not where I was going with that. And, um, and I do talk about in the course, like creating accountability for yourself so that you have those, you know, stops in place. Um, but what motivated me was the scripture, second Corinthians 12, nine, that says in my weakness, his power is made perfect. Uh, that literally, literally motivated me because I, toward the end, especially felt so incredibly weak. And so I would literally sit down at my computer and go, okay, God, I cannot do this. I cannot, I know I can't, I, 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 I don't even feel like I want to, <laughs> I feel, you know, so I would sit down and go, so here I am show up because that's what you do. I am weak. And so I know right now you are going to show up in power. You're going to show up. So my weakness became my availability. It became this, this, this space for the power of God to come in and fill. And he did every single time, every time. And I just would show up for him and I would put, you know, it's his name on the line. You know, he says, I am Jehovah Jireh, God, your provider, you know, Jehovah um, Nisi, he's our banner. He covers us, you know? And so we sit down and we say, this is your name. This is who you are. And this is your promise. You know, in my weakness, your power is made. It's made perfect. It's made strong. And so my dad talks about our weakness being those guideposts that we need along the way to remind us that we are not self-sufficient beings. We are totally dependent beings. We're not self-dependent. Wow. We're Jesus dependent. And so what a great reminder. We need that. I need to remember, nope, I'm Jesus dependent, not Chrissy dependent, you know? And, um, it, and that's part of dying to self and taking up our cross and following him. I am totally and incredibly Jesus dependent. That's you picture Paul in the prison, you know, he's surrounded. He's in, he's in chains. He's shackled. He's locked up. He's behind bars and he has this call in his life. And so many of us, we're, we, we almost whine and sorry, it's like mama Chrissy coming out, but we want to whine and complain about not being seen or nobody notices the gifts I have and all this stuff. And, you know, well, Paul had an assignment on his life and he was filled with the power of God and the sick were healed and the, you know, the, the lame were getting up and he was preaching the gospel to thousands and now he's behind bars and he didn't let that stop him. He didn't let that discourage him. He didn't let that shut him down. If anything, all that did is it, it, it it's what wrote the epistles. It's what inspired the epistles to be written, you know, I'm weak right now, but it's now I'm realizing that his grace is sufficient for me yes. and his power is made perfect in my weakness. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep on writing these letters. You know, you can't yeah. take that away from me. Yeah. And he wrote the letters and there was even the time when the, the prison doors were open, you yeah. know, and yeah. I just believe that that's what God is wanting to do for so many of you that if you'll just resolve, you know, to, like Paul, even I resolve to know nothing, but Christ and him crucified, you know, resolve in your heart of hearts, like the inspiration that you have within is divine from the Holy Spirit. And you have that call on your life. And no matter if you're seen or unseen behind bars or, or out in front, no matter what, you're going to release what it is that God has put on the inside of you. And you're motivated by his spirit, by his moving um, man, it's like those prison doors that you feel behind, like you're behind that you're going to just bust right open because yeah. who can stop the Lord almighty? You know, that's right. Who can stop the Lord almighty? And that's, that's why we have to be a Psalm 91 writer, author messenger, where we abide under 
the shadow. That's why we need to be an Isaiah 40, uh, 29 through 31 writer, author, messenger, so that we can be infused with Whoa. his divine strength. That's what this is all about. That's why we, I love the sitting with the lamb that God used you to, to, to bring out here several weeks ago. That's why we sit with the lamb so that we don't have to function from our own strength, from our own grit. I know grit. I have done grit. I have done flesh and strength. I have, and, and I have seen some okay things. But then when I stay in that place of grit and grinding it out in my own flesh, it only takes me so far. But usually it actually, usually it takes me to a place that I don't want to be that now removes the grace, the empowerment, yeah. the, un, the unforced rhythms of grace. That's where pressure comes from. That's where unnecessary warfare comes from. That's where anxiety comes from. And what does the scripture tell us in, in Philippians? What are we supposed to do with our concerns and our anxiety? We're supposed to cast those cares. We're supposed to place them on, on the Lord. We're supposed to uh, give them to over to him so that he can infuse us and empower with his strength. But it's, you don't just, Lord, I, I give you my cares. I give you my concerns. I give you my worries. You actually come under the shadow and the shelter of the Almighty. You wait upon God on Yahweh's grace. You sit with the Lamb. That's how you move from just the motivation and the grit to the inspiration that carries you to keep on to write, but then to keep on writing. And man, I can't wait to see all of the all the books that are going to be be written, yeah. and we, we've got some. Um, we've got an announcement on Monday. We've got a really really cool announcement on Monday, and the announcement that is coming here is going to be Monday, January six, is an additional mentoring bonus, and it actually it it kind of um, let's supports what we're talking. There is a fourth module that we're going to be adding. So everybody who has already signed up for unlocking your book, you automatically get any of the bonuses. But this will be people that sign up between really now and January 14th to get this extra um, uh, module. The fourth module, we're going to announce it uh, on Monday, January 6th. And it supports really what we're talking about right now as far as moving from motivation and inspiration because you need the mentoring but then you need the mechanics and then you need the marketing but after all that's done when all that is over uh, then you need the follow-up part right you need the uh, activation to can actually go back and do the work so you can finally get the get, get it all out there and so we have uh, and actually I should say there's two announcements, but we'll do it on Monday, January 6th about the, the mentoring bonus. So cool, cool, cool stuff. Exciting, to, excited to uh, release all that. God's good. Um, he's definitely inspiring us, isn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's so good. He, he's just, ah, uh, man. I some I heard on the radio um, when I on New Year's Eve they were saying they had a guy on or they put a question out there like your one word what's your one word of like the one thing you want to I can't remember that what they said but it was basically like focus on like for the new year like if you could put it in one word uh, your like what you want your year to be what you want to focus on your goal whatever what what would it be and immediately in my spirit it's just Jesus popped into my spirit. Jesus is my one word. He is, he's what I want my gaze to be on. He's what I want motivating me, leading me, calling me, speaking to me. You know, it just Jesus. I want to know Jesus more in 2020. I want to be undone. I want to be wrecked. I want to live lovesick, you know, for Jesus in 2020. And I want that to be the, the very, 
thing that lights the fire and does the work and, you know, opens the doors and writes the stuff and whatever, whatever 2020 is supposed to look like. God wrote that, you know, he writes our story yeah. and we, we, we walk in the story. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. That's motivating right there and inspiring, you know, to know your steps are ordered by God. So we simply slip into this place of surrender, living totally and utterly surrendered to the lamb, to Jesus Christ. You know, we live surrendered and we walk surrendered, knowing that my step, even if it doesn't look like it's going to land anywhere, by golly, my father will put his hand out under my foot and catch it if he has to. But I live that surrendered. I don't need to see where my foot will land. I don't need to see what's in front of me. I just, I see Jesus doing this, saying, come, come follow yeah. me, come. And he's doing that, but he's also right there. He has you by the hand and he's holding yeah. your hand and it's his story that you're walking in. And so I pray that that encourages you today and motivates and inspires um, to yeah. just have your eyes totally fixed on Jesus. He's the author. He's the perfecter. Yeah. He's the finisher of faith. Um, he's the one. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know what? Um, I, I feel like we need to we need to pray and just kind of activate for for folks here that are watching and listening. Uh, we're 12 days away. We haven't even started the mentoring yet. We haven't even started unlocking your book. It all goes live on January 14th. So you can go to unlockingyourbook.com if you haven't signed up yet. But I want to uh, just kind of bring an activation and impartation specifically of helping people move from the motivation and inspiration. And I'll, and I'll say this because uh, about impartation and activations and stuff, it, there's no, there's no magic, you know, when someone prays or lays hands on you or, you know, it, or whatever that looks like or feels like in, in your sphere, in your life, in your world, the, 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 anointing that breaks the yoke is definitely part of the impartation or part of the activation, but you have to receive it. You have to, as, as uh, Hebrews chapter four says, you have to mix the word with your faith. If you just have word and you just, or you just have faith and you don't mix, there's not that, uh, that uh, explosion, that dynamicness that causes things to actually move, actually things to break through. So we need we need to position ourselves in a, a pliable manner. Lord, I need this. I want to move from external motivation to the place of inspiration where you will actually uh, breathe life into me breathe life into my writing. It will actually inflame and blow into that life giving spirit that causes me to mount up with wings as eagles. So I'd like us to just, just do that. We can just, you know, do that together. Um, you know, why don't you just start and then I'll join in and we'll just release that and pray for those that are uh, watching and listening Move from motivation to inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, Father, we thank you for the honor of partnering with you in this program and its process to partner with what you've deposited in each and every one of these amazing vessels um, that are signing up with mm. their yes for what you have the destiny that you've marked their life with. And I ask Holy spirit right now that you would breathe inside that you would begin to, we just with our prayers fan into flame that that's inside of them. And father, yeah. you, would you breathe on each and every person listening to this right now, breathe your fresh reviving, renewing breath of life on each and every one of these amazing people that are watching, that have so much gold inside of them. Would you be the refining fire in them right now that just begins to 
that continues to mold and shape. And I just even see the gold in you beginning, just it's, it's heating up and it's, yes. it's oozing even. I just can see it in the spirit that the gold that's inside of you is it's melting and it's oozing and it's, it's growing and it's getting bigger mm -hmm. and bigger mm -hmm. and bigger. And that's what you're going to pour out. And that's what you're going to, that's what's, that's the inspiration inside of you. That's what's been deposited inside of you. That gold that's going to come out through the pen. Mm. I see you writing. I see your hand and like gold ink just mm. all over the pages. And, and, and so we just say, yes, Father, we partner with these brothers and sisters with mm. their yes. And we agree and we say, move on them, Lord. Um, that fresh wind, that fresh breath. Yes. Impart within them greater wisdom. Mm. In, let your glory fall in their homes. Fill yeah. their home, their bedroom, their prayer closet, their 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 entire home with your glory. Let your glory fall in their home right now. As it's, it's what he's doing. His glory is filling your room right now. Lord, let the let the let let the fear of the Lord come on each and every one of us right now as we sit in your presence father let it let the fear of the lord that is the beginning of wisdom fall on each and every one of us you are you are holy god you are holy you are holy and you are worthy and you can have our yes you can have our pen you can have our hand you can have our words you can have your way in our lives and we surrender to you a fresh and new a new right here at the beginning of the new year we say and everybody that's just listening i just ask that you would just repeat this say i surrender mm. i surrender father we surrender to you we lay down our ideas even our blueprints and we just surrender with our yes before you god it's your plan that we partner with. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. And we just decree and declare that God is empowering you and he is infusing you when even though you may feel powerless or feeble, he's infusing you with ever increasing strength, the ever increasing strength of the Lord. You are not feeble. You are not powerless. You are not hopeless. But though young would faint and get exhausted, though the athletic would stumble and fall, you are waiting and you are going to continue to wait on Father's grace so that you will walk in, that you would experience the divine grace of the Lord, that you would, you would uh, be overshadowed and you would be empowered and be lifted up with the divine strength of the Lord. You're going to rise up. We just decree and declare that you rise up on the soaring wings and fly like an eagle. Fly exactly like an eagle because that is the promise that God has given you so that you can run your race, so you can write your book, so that you can move into this without growing weary because God doesn't grow weary. His strength doesn't grow weary. He never faints and never gets exhausted and he's inspiring and he's infusing you with the strength so that you can fly like an eagle and you can write this book without giving up. And we decree and declare that you would sit with the lamb in this this season and it would actually not just really not just be a season but it would be a new lifestyle for you that you would move into this place of sitting with and under the shadow of shaddai so that you would be hidden in the strength of him be hidden in the strength of god be hidden in the strength of the most high that he would hide you and he would shield you uh, really to put you in in that at the table with him in that bubble with him so that his hope would hold you so that he, he would become your new stronghold god would become your new stronghold god would become your new shelter and he would be your great confidence and we decree and we declare that for you for 2020 we decree and declare that for you as you pen these books, you pen for the Lord. It's time 
for you to come into alignment and come into agreement with heaven and right in <laughs> in his strength in his strength and even i received that <laughs> i want yeah. i need strength lord i yeah. need strength so wow god is good yeah i i had so i have a word for somebody yeah. um maybe multiple i'm not sure but when we were talking about paul in the prison and then jeremiah was talking about being hidden under the shadow of his wing i really felt like there's some who you relate to that feeling like you're behind bars and you have so much inside you and you're just wanting to get out and you're wanting to and you feel that force kind of keeping you um almost like you've said it, i'm being held back this is holding me back um something's holding me back and the lord wants you to know today that you're not behind bars you're not in a prison you you're actually it's the reality of that being hidden under the shadow of his wing that strength of God, he's the one that's keeping you and holding you in that place as he's teaching you and pouring into you. So he wants you, he wants to help reframe that today as a positive so that you realize that you've not been, you've not been held back in a negative. You've not been it refrained and restrained by even the world's system. You're actually being held back by your father because he's pouring into you and he's speaking into you wisdom and insights and revelation and things. So just thank him for that. If that's for you, just say, yeah, Terry, praise God. So just say, thank you, God. That's all you have to do is just say, thank you, father, for hiding me in the shadow of your wing, for your strong arm, holding me and protecting me and guarding me. And and you may even need to say, I repent for feeling like I was in a prison. You may need to do that. Uh, you'll know because the Lord will reveal it to you. So if, if that's the case, do that and thank him. Thank him for, for holding you and shielding you and guarding you um, and protecting you um, all for his goodness and his glory and his namesake. And then it's him that will release you and launch you. Um, so praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the living God. And before we just give our, our final announcements uh, uh, with our, our guest here at 1.30, let's be really, really transparent. So uh, Chrissy actually ha has has been sick, like physically sick. Um, and I, like yesterday, I actually started feeling, you know, sick and, and had some, some things going on. And quite frankly, I mean, like yesterday, I mean, I was, I was pooped. You know, and I'm, I'm a high energy person. I know you're a high energy person, but man, it was, I, I, I didn't feel the motivation, you know, even to do today and everything else that I have going on in my life. I, you know, we, we, uh, have started a church. We, I've got a family, you know, I've got business. I've got unlocking your book, all of these things. You, you have things going on and there she is, you know, she coughs, you know, so this is no facade, you know, here. And, but there was an inspiration because the Lord really has called us to that. And that's what helps you. Uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we read it to help you run your race, <laughs> right? And we, to, to finish what he has started. And so we are inspired, not motivated to do this and, and be here with you. But I want to leave everybody with just uh, final announcements and, and reminder. If you can join us uh, today at 1.30, uh, Christy, why don't you just let everybody know who we have uh, coming back today at 1.30 p.m. Yeah, Robia Scott, actress from the Unplanned movie. Um, she And she's also a, a speaker, a preacher. She's a, uh, she has a coach, uh, coaching um, online coaching mentoring program that she does and she offers. She's an author, amazing prophetic voice. She'll be with us today at 1.30. We're so excited to have her, 1.30 Central. Amen, amen. So come on back if you can. If you missed the, the live stream, you can always catch uh, the replay. And then also, don't forget, go to unlockingyourbook.com and see if this mentoring is for you. It is mentoring to unlock your book, remove the confusion, clarify your message, and promote that message that's on the inside of you. And then on Monday, we have some very special announcement too. Uh, I'm gonna use, I, I don't know Swahili, but uh, let's see, uh, there's dose and 
that's all I got. So two and dos. Uh, I wish I knew the French version of two. It's un, un, oh. deux. De. Is it un, deux, trois? Un, deux. Oh. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, I could make stuff up and probably be like, oh my gosh, he knows so many languages. Uh, but anyway, I know, I mean, I know English, you know, um, you know, I, I, I know tongues. Um, I, I speak in hashtag uh, and I speak in GIF. I, def I speak in GIF, but that's, do that, yeah. I limit that. Um, okay. Praise the Lord. Well, Chris, it was good to see you this morning. Here at 1.30 uh, Central Standard Time, everybody comes to see us as our interview with Robia Scott, and we get to rock and roll. Here we go. January 14th, we are just 12 days away. Go to unlockingyourbook.com, see if it's the right fit for you. God bless. See you at 1.30. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.